All right, welcome back to One Bills Live here at St. John Fisher University training camp day two. And joining us here on the show is Bills General Manager Brandon Bean. Brandon, thanks for giving us some time. Um, day two, much like day one, I, I want to say I can remember this from 2019. So day one at camp, Sean gets him jumping right into red zone. Day one at camp in like 2019, I want to say. I don't know why that's sticking in my head. And sure enough, here again, Day one, right into red zone. Today was heavy third down stuff. Is there, I mean, I know there's a reason why Sean does everything. There, yeah. there is nothing that is not thought through, uh, knowing the methodical guy he is. Why red zone and, and third down early on, particularly third and short? Is that just to keep the routes shorter so they're not doing so much running right out of the gate, or are there other reasons? Well, I think it's there's multiple. It is. You, you do want to monitor the reps, and, and we're trying to ramp these guys up. But um, third down and red zone, a lot of games are won and yeah. lost uh, on those two <laughs> Pretty phases. Pretty darn important. <laughs> so uh, it's a quick – uh, you know, you can – Sean can stand up there all day and stress, hey, we've got to be good here, we've got to be good here, and the guys are like, oh, right, we got it, we, we got it. Well, do you? And so <laughs> let's go out here early. So it's a, it can be a good wake-up call for one side of the ball. or You know, and, and yesterday I think, you know, the defense for sure. Uh, but red zone's hard. You know, it, it is more advantageous. There's just less territory for those, you know, receivers to move around. But um, it was a good wake-up call everyone's – Talking about our offense of, of hey, it's it's not going to be easy when you get down here and you, and it's got to be we got to be efficient down there. We've when we've been good down there, we've been really hard to stop. You broke the ice on the transactions, which are inevitable this time of year. Yeah. Jordan Simmons, mostly a guard. Yeah. So what 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 was the appeal there? And and is this in kind of relation to the Roger Saffold situation? Yeah, hundred um, percent. You know, we always line up some workouts leading up to camp or uh, right when we get here. And this year, with just the early start and when we wanted to bring our people back, we decided to do it uh, after the first practice. So a lot of these were lined up uh, before then, and you, you kind you know Murphy's Law, something's going to happen with uh, – and we'd love to sign more. You know, we lost Anku, uh, but we only had mm-hmm. one spot right now. We'll, we'll see how – it's a balancing act because when you now that we're at 90, mm-hmm. you know, you get more people hurt. you got you got to thin a position to fill that, and now – that gets thin, so um, we, we try and weigh that and, and, and make the best decisions. We, there was an interesting give and take. So Vaughn talks to the media yesterday and says, I'll do whatever this team asks me, but I want snaps. <laughs> I want to be on the field. He's used to being on the field. Yeah. Um, and then Leslie spoke today and was asked about that very subject, and he said, look, we've got a rotational system. We've had our conversations with Vaughn. We know where we need to be with that. My take from it is – it's a whole lot of nothing. Like, yeah, I think they're going to be able to figure out when Vaughn needs to be on the yeah, field. Yeah, Leslie that, Frazier's been doing this a while. Yeah, that that'll take care of itself. Every game is its own game. I mean, you may think you think going in the game it's going to play out like this. How many times does it play out differently? And so, you know, we want Vaughn to definitely be in there when we need him. And ultimately, we're going to need him down the stretch too. So it'll be that balance. But um, he'll be involved. I mean, he's a vet. He knows his body. He knows what he needs from practice reps to game reps. And um, you can guarantee if, if he's up and healthy that, you know, he's going to be in the game when we need stops, you know, two-minute, last minute, you know, uh, of a game, mm-hmm. half, whatever it is, uh, you can expect number 40 to be out there. And and I I know I don't have the trained eye like you and your scouting department do, but he looks regular season ready now. Yeah, yeah he, <laughs> I mean, he loves ball, and he trains, and uh, this, is, this is, you know, it's a profession – but he enjoys the heck out of it. He enjoys the process. He works out. You could see, you know, he was in and out of, of the off-season program, but when he was there, it's not like we had to ramp him up. He mm-hmm. he was working wherever he was, whether it was L.A. or whether it was Texas. So uh, he looks he looks good and ready to roll, and, and it's been fun to see him. I know you and the coaching staff have been big on position flexibility. We understand the obvious value in that, whether it's offensive line or elsewhere. And we see Tommy Doyle moving around a little bit. And Nick McLeod we see moving around a little bit. Can you just maybe, I guess the question here is, how do you decide, hey, like Nick McLeod, for example, let's try him here because of this reason. Is there, like, I'm curious the decision-making process and saying, let's try him here and see how it goes. Yeah, we, we talked about Nick back in the spring of, um, you know, with his ball skills, his instincts, that his final resting spot at some point in this league may be safety, and so we moved him there. Now, he's a really strong press corner 
off is not going to be um, his strength right now. He's working on it, and uh, same as some of the other guys. But so he in the next thing you got to ask him: Are they smart enough mm-hmm. to to be able to transition in the same practice? And um, he's got really good instincts, really good ball skills. We've seen that for two years. You know, back to last year when we had him before Cincinnati claimed him, and um, he's done a great job. He's a he's just a humble, great, hardworking kid. You. You could put him at linebacker, and uh, he's gonna find a way to make a play. And, and yeah. you know, it's just—he's just one of those kids. He knows he's got a knack for, for being around the ball. Had two picks today. One kind of fell into his lap, but the other one—well, there was a little, there was a little disagreement as to whether there was a little DPI there number, before the ball got number there. Number seventeen came over <laughs> arguing. We need, we need officials here. That was, and I, I said it was a bang bang play. You, you could see it going either way. Um, James Cook has impressed early, and and not just fans that are watching but it's veteran players on this roster brandon that are i mean mitch morse was talking about him all the way back in the spring he called him a stud i mean that's that's a big compliment coming from a six seven year guy that's seen a lot of football mm-hmm. and he's seen him for all the two weeks and he's like this guy's gonna help us and then stefan was just asked today because he knows his older brother dalvin he was a teammate of his he said hey do you see a little of dalvin and james and he goes they look similar yeah. and he believes that James is on a fast track to help this team. I know we're only two days in. I don't want to yeah. get ahead of ourselves yeah. here, but he stands out. Yeah, he, he's he's got he's very smooth. Um, he's got really good ball skills, and he's just. I talked about instincts with with McLeod. You either got it or you don't. You played ball. You grew up. James has been around ball. Obviously, he's had an older brother and mm-hmm. and others in his family. Uh, you can tell this kid played a lot of backyard football before he ever. Uh, played for teams growing up and obviously on to Georgia. Um, he's just uh, – he loves ball. He loves the process. And he's a rookie. So, you know, we don't want to blow it up too big. He's going to have to earn it. But um, it's not too big for him. Yeah. You, can, you can sometimes tell when guys get out of here, well, we're going to have to slow down here a little bit. This is this is a lot much. It's, it's natural for him. He's fitting right in whether he's running with the ones or the twos. You mentioned some of the younger guys adjusting in the defensive back group to playing off coverage and stuff. Would you put Kair in that category, knowing that when you were scouting him, is I think you even said it after you drafted him, his strength is press man. Yep. So he's going to have to learn the other stuff. So this is – we're seeing some of that now yeah. because you saw Josh and Stefan going right at him early in team today. Yeah, no doubt. He, he's going to have to learn all the uh, – these guys have, at this level, great releases, especially when you're going against Stefan Diggs. Right. I mean, his, all pro. his releases are elite. It's, it's what makes him – uh, I mean, he's got a lot of other skills, but getting off press is huge, especially when you play some of these teams that do so much press man. So, yeah, that's – you know, we talked about in the offseason with the rules, you know, the way they were, he got a lot of work in off coverage, and I think mm-hmm. it's getting better. That's just something – time, reps, something he wasn't asked to do as much at Florida that, uh, you know, again, we'll try to put him in his strengths too. We're not going to have him right. in off coverage 80% of the time if he's best in press. And so – well, it'll be a little mixed, but you don't want to always tell the offense, you know, anytime Kyrie's out there, he's always impressed. So he'll continue to work, but I think he's done a nice job. Something tells me he's going to show up a little bit more, too, when you guys put the pants on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, all this is – this is the thing we have to – all this is still in uh, T-shirt shorts. Right. Um, the other thing, uh, Jamison Crowder okay? Just – minor stuff here yeah. or like he missed today i saw him on the bike yeah he's good or yeah he's just got some some tightness soreness okay. uh so uh hopefully we can get him back out here in the next few days and then how people keep asking how far away is spencer from full practice we see him out there he's doing individual position drills he's even doing some walkthrough with team yeah is he close or yeah i mean we're just trying to ramp him up the right way he oh, okay. you know he had a limited spring um he didn't do anything on the field in the spring uh, because of his back, uh, you know, he had a procedure done there. So uh, he's he's progressing. He's just under kind of a, a build up since he, you know, he was more rehabbing than going through a full off season program like so many of these guys went. And so we're just trying to be smart. And it's not that you're worried about the injury he had; it's just building the rest of his body up. So it's a strength and endurance thing. It's a strength more. and endurance. Just build him up, stair step. Gotcha. You don't want to rush him out there, but he's doing great. Uh, you know, you always want to know, how did you do that first practice? I saw him last night. And he said it felt good. I was ready to do more. You know, they're holding yeah. him back a little bit. I mean, he looks I mean, he looks felt. Him and Tommy Doyle, like, it's amazing when you see once a young player has had a full off season in an NFL program, yeah. especially like the one we have here with Siano and company, like the, the transformation, like Boogie Basham, 
He looks like a different person. Buggy, I mean, Rousseau's filling out. Yeah, you, you know. but I mean, Tommy looks trim. Yeah. Um, so does Spal. I mean, it's amazing the tra- the body composition changes that you can make if, in one off season. If you're a professional, you know, you're not, they're not having to do classes. It's it's there. The, our staff is there, and I'm sure other NFL clubs would say the same. It's what you want to do. How much do you want to invest in, in your in your body and, and get it, you know, as prime as you can, whether it's losing weight, whether it's gaining strength, whatever you, you need, wherever you come in, uh, we, we can put you on a program, and in a year you can see a lot of growth. Last guy I wanted to ask you about, and, and Leslie did talk about him today too, is Jordan Phillips. I mean, we, we remember the nine-and-a-half sack guy that was here in 2019, and it's probably hard to readily recognize it on a frame that large, but he looks – fit too yeah. and there seems to be an explosion um here in camp to his game that might be even better than the last time we saw him in a bill's uniform and leslie was singing his praises this morning first guy in the weight room this morning um Ciano gave him a glowing report when he got back when he was away for five weeks which yeah. i know with bigger guys sometimes you yeah. say hey you know don't because those guys can gain, gain 15 pounds in a day and yeah. it's like nothing I feel like I can too. Well, <laughs> I'm not that far off myself. I'm, I'm, I'm he, in that same. He's boat, done afraid. a he's done a great job though. To your to your point, Jordan, um, he came back with this calm confidence that um, you know he's always been confident, but he just he, he the maturity level has risen, and he's just been such a pro. And you know you saw it in the spring, like he picked up like he had never left, and just encouraging the young guys and hustling to the ball. I mean, today he makes a great play. Mm-hmm. Uh, Josh gets. Uh, you know, Vaughn comes up high, Josh dips under, goes out to his left, and Jordan loops around behind Vaughn and is right there. And, you know, Josh would have got it away, but it probably would have been a hit on the quarterback, and, and that, that goes to his hustle and, and, and his effort. When you have – we have a little more time. When we have veteran players who you've scouted on film and then you say, okay, this is a guy we wouldn't mind acquiring, and then you get them here, and you, obviously you want to see how they fit here – but there are parts, I think, to a guy like O.J. Howard's game where you're waiting to see because he's been off the field so much with previous injuries. So if there is a, if there is a short list of what he needs to demonstrate due to the time that he's missed here, what would you say those elements of his game are? Yeah, I think just um, first off, you know, tight ends are two – they got two roles. they got to block. And and they've got to you know he's got really good hands. Uh, he's a build up speed guy. He can he can get up and roll, and he's just a huge target in the middle of the field. He's got that. Um, I would say improve his point of attack blocking. Like just and it's not terrible. I've you know it's 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 just he can take another step there. And then I mean if you look where Dawson's come as a point of attack blocker in his time here, he's really improved to be a a three down player you're not just putting them out there and passing downs i would say continue to do that and then just the feel of our offense that feel of when josh you know or case whoever's in there wants you to sit down just that okay um that feel of the zone you know finding those holes and those creases in in how the route combinations are which just takes time it takes reps and then explosion thing is that something you got to keep an eye on like i mean i know he's over a year removed from the achilles but that's always something you're looking for after an injury like that right like can it come back is it the same that yeah, kind of thing no doubt he's he's always been um a built when he's at top end he's really rolling i'm, I'm seeing that like i don't know if he's always had that first step just because he's such a big so know, he's a build-up speed he's guy. more of a build-up speed than that instant okay um, but when he's up and rolling i mean you know rob gronkowski didn't have that but right when, when he's up and rolling and i'm not comparing those two guys i'm just saying you can you can be a force even if you don't have that instant. He's just such a big body, uh, tall, long. It just sometimes it takes those guys that aren't as low to the ground. You know, right? They don't have that initial burst. Yeah. Well, when Josh calls him a big guy, you know he must be big. So he's a he's a big man. You know, being around him, you know, man, I, I knew OJ was big, and we scouted him in the process, but. He, he feels even bigger now. All right. Well, listen, we appreciate the time as always. Thanks for stopping by and joining us here. We look forward to catching up with you a little bit later on down the line. But enjoy the rest of training camp, and uh, we'll hear from you soon. Tell Tasker we're finding him for a no-show. That, uh, well, yeah. Well, yeah. He gets, fine, it's fine it's 50000 for players 
Since he's an ex player, we're going to give him uh, a third of that. So do, <laughs> start doing the math. Tell him he owes us. <laughs> yeah, we were, hey, we were just happy with a free lunch. But yeah. okay, you, you, you he's going to be a he's, hard bargain. He's going to be in the kitchen working <laughs> off uh, his meals since he didn't. We'll show. have him flipping turkey burgers. That's what, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Brandon. Appreciate you, it. You got it.